Welcome to Aerie Solutions channel. Today I'll be presenting a video on engineering mechanics, an introduction basically. So I've just been introducing mechanics in this video. And to begin with, I'm going to try to define what mechanics is. Engineering mechanics is just a branch of science that studies the effect of forces on the conditions of rest or motion of a body. That is to say, mechanics is that branch of science that tries to make predictions or try to describe how a body would react when subjected a particular force or a number of forces. And it is divided into two key branches. We have statics, which is the branch of mechanics that studies the effect of forces on bodies that are either at rest or in equilibrium. And then uh, it could be any of the contact forces, whether it's push or pull. In as much as the body is at rest and is under the influence of a force, that branch of science that tends to predict how the body would behave is statics. Then dynamics is a second aspect of engineering mechanics that tends to study the behavior of a body in motion when subjected to forces. That is dynamic tends to predict how a body that is in motion would respond to, respond to a force that is exerted on it. And there are different forms. It could be as a result of gravity or impact force or even elastic force that makes a body to undergo to and fro motion. There are different areas of science that tends to study the influence of forces on the body. There is fluid mechanics that tends to predict the behavior of fluids under the influence of a force. There is mechanics of machine that deals with machine elements and their interactions. And then um, there is mechanics of materials that deals with deformation as a result of a force. That is when the body is made to either compress or expand significantly when acted upon by a force. That branch of science that studies this behavior of solid is mechanics of solid. There are other names for it as well. There are some areas it's called strength of materials. Some areas we call it mechanics of materials. Then there is engineering mechanics that deals with solids that are assumed to be rigid. So engineering mechanics tends to study the effect of forces on the body with the assumption that the deformations on the body are negligible. What and what is covered inside statics? Well, Basically, statics deals with finding forces and their direction, whether it's a resultant force or one particular unknown force that will make the body to remain at rest. Or one may be required to determine moments and their direction as well. And apart from finding forces and moments as well as their directions, one may need to find the position of a force or a moment to keep the body at equilibrium. Magnus helps to develop one's conceptual and analytical skills. It actually prepares the engineering students for education in engineering and also engineering practice. What that means is it helps us to develop a form of skills that gives us better abilities to simulate solutions to problems that may differ largely from one another. So with Magnus, the engineering student is well prepared to face the dynamics of engineering problems. Why would some students find engineering Magnus difficult? First and foremost, because um, in Magnus, one tends to analyze systems that differ greatly in their shapes or their configuration, as well as their sizes. For example, we have different shapes of ladder and configurations then apart from the fact that they may differ in configuration and shapes we may also have different sizes so because of this 
it brings a form of complexity to engineering mechanics. And apart from that, there may be variations in the number of applied forces as well as their magnitude and their durations. In mechanics, one may be faced with the same system but different number of forces acting on the body as well as even differing magnitudes or differing direction of forces. Then there is variation in units as well. Of course, we don't need anybody to tell us that 1,000 newtons greatly differs from 1,000 kilonewtons. Some of the things one would to know before commencing studies in engineering mechanics. Uh, well, basic knowledge of different engineering quantities and their measurements. For example, fundamental derived quantities, their differences, their examples their units as well. So one should be familiar with the different systems of units and their conversions. Then apart from that, one is also supposed to know the difference between scalar and vector quantities. Then some fundamental laws in physics, such as the Newton's law, the parallelogram law, cosine, the sine rules. These are a little more as some of the basic requirements that are needed for undertaking studies in statics. Just to run through some of these things in summary, fundamental quantities are those quantities that do not actually derive their units from all their quantities. And there are just seven of them. We have the time, mass, length, temperature, amount of substance, luminous intensity, and electric charges. While the derived quantities are those ones that will derive their units from all their quantities, like force, for example, is derived from mass and acceleration. Speed is derived from distance and time. Acceleration is derived from speed and time, and so on and so forth. Um, as far as statics is concerned, we are going to be looking at force majorly and moments, and these are derived quantities. It is important we are familiar with their units and how to convert from one form of units to another and also to be able to use their prefaces. For example, if you have 1000 kilonewtons, how do you convert 1000 kilonewtons to, to newtons? Then there are scalar quantities. These are quantities that have just magnitude without durations. Time, mass, temperature, distance, and speed. These are all examples of scalar quantities. Vector quantities, however, are those ones that have both magnitudes and directions. And um, as far as mechanics is concerned, we'll be dealing with a lot of vector quantities. Force, moment, momentum, velocity, displacement, acceleration, and so on, are all vector quantities. And as far as this course will be concerned, statics especially will be dealing greatly with force and moments, which are vector quantities. Concept of space. We are quickly going to look at the concept of space and how we can measure position of objects in space. Space is a region occupied by a body that can be measured in terms of an angle or linearly from a set point or a set axis. For example, if we have a vehicle which is a body every region around the vehicle is what we call space and we can decide to measure the position of the vehicle from a particular position and that kind of measurement can be linear or angular measurements at least we take us to coordinate systems coordinate system is just a system consisting of a set of coordinates or you can say a set of numbers that is used to describe the position of an object from a set reference point. And there are different kinds of coordinates. But as far as Mechanics is concerned, we're just going to mention the cylindrical, the spherical, and the Cartesian coordinates. But just to describe them briefly, the cylindrical coordinate is a coordinate system that tends to describe the position of an object from an origin using one angular dimension and at least one linear dimension 
for its description. Then we have the spherical coordinate system that uses at least one angular dimension and just one linear dimension to describe the position of an object in space. Then the Cartesian coordinate system is a coordinate system that uses linear perpendicular dimensions or linear coordinates that are perpendicular to themselves to describe the position of an object either in space or in a plane. Now it is important we note that we have what we call two-dimensional Cartesian coordinate system. A form of system that can be used to describe the position of an object in, in a plane. That is to say, we can conveniently use two dimensions, one in the horizontal axis and one in the vertical axis, to describe the position of an object, usually in a plane. Then we have the three dimensional Cartesian coordinate system that uses three dimensions to describe the position of an object in space. We are going to see proper description of the Cartesian coordinate system. Quickly, we are going to run through the concept of force and how it could be described using vector notations. A force is any effect or action that tends to change the state of rest or motion of a body to which it is applied. A force could be contact forces such as push and pull or non-contact forces such as magnetic forces, gravitational forces, elastic forces, and impact force. How do we represent forces using vector notations? Of course, we know that vectors are usually represented with a straight line that has an arrow at its head. And the length of the line usually is equivalent to the magnitude of the force being considered. And usually the line points in the direction of the force that is being considered. We can have so for a force we have what we call magnitude and we have what we call direction, which could be an angular measurement of the force from a set reference point. This force has a value that acts in the vertical direction, which we call component of the force in the y direction, and it has a value that acts in the horizontal direction as well. And the force can be represented quantitatively using these values, fx and fy, and these values can easily be computed using knowledge from trigonometry. And we shall be seeing more of these as we progress. Same thing applies for a three-dimensional system. We have a force, we have its magnitude. We may want to introduce its coordinates, x axis, y axis, and z axis, since it is a three-dimensional system. And of course, this force has components in different directions. It has components in the x axis direction, it has components in the y axis direction, and it has components in the z axis direction. Also, also this force has what we call direction angles in the x direction that is the angle that the force is making with the x axis it has direction angle in the y direction that is the angle the force is making with the y axis and as well as a particular angle it's making with the z axis which is called the direction angle in that axis these angles can easily be computed if the dimensions are known what we call position vector of the force. So if we know the position vector of the force, x, y, z, we can easily find the direction angle of the force by first computing what we call direction cosines. Direction cosines in the x axis, direction cosines in the y axis, and direction cosine in the z axis. Once all these are known, if we find the arc force of the values, we can therefore know the direction angles. And once these direction angles are known, and the direction cosine unknown, we can easily find the component of the force in the different axes or in the different directions. So invariably we've looked at some reasons why some students will find making this difficult. We've also touched on space and the concept of force. 
and see how forces can be described using the coordinate system and this will be all for now i do hope you find this video helpful thanks so much for watching